Hello. Before the chat we had with Scott Dutsbury begins, I just want to give some clarity and some insight onto how this was set up uh, and how the questions were asked uh, within the Zoom call in which it was held today. So a number of fan outlets and channels were involved, including myself. It was a 45 minute or so conversation with Scott Duxbury, and we were limited to about two to three questions per outlet. The first question I asked today was in relation to the redesignation of home fans within Vicarage Road. So that would mean maybe people from the singing section of the Rookery End moving over to where the existing family stand is to create a better atmosphere. And head of media, Richard Walker, actually took the lead in that question and gave quite a detailed answer for you guys to listen to. The second question that I asked was directed primarily to Scott Duxbury, and that was in relation to the salary he has held at Watford in previous years, which was very, very high, around £948,000. And you'll be able to see his answer to that question in the video today. As I said, a number of other Watford fan outlets and channels were involved in this chat, and you'll be able to check out their questions and answers on their respective channels. But today I'm presenting you with my questions and answers that I put to both Richard Richard Walker, Head of Media at Watford, and Scott Duxbury in regards to his salary. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on his answers in the comment section down below, and we'll catch you again very soon. Hi, Scott. Thanks for speaking to us today. No uh, in the recently published fan engagement plan, it states that Watford uh, are keen to understand on a much broader scale the appetite among supporters for the potential redesignation uh, of home stands within Vicarage Road. Could you shed some light on what this consultation process would look like? Would it be in a similar vein to what we saw with the proposals to redesign the club's badge a few years ago? It's a great question because Richard's leading that, so Richard can answer it. Yeah, it's probably more a um, uh, probably more one that I'm going to leave James on that. Okay. It's going it's going to be it's going to be something that we're going to ask everyone's opinion about. So it, when I say everyone, I'm talking primarily about the thirteen thousand season ticket holders that are sat in those seats at the moment. Just for a bit of context, the ground's just over twenty two. So 13 season tickets, um, roughly five or 600, 700 comps per game. 500 of those are for the community trust. Um, 2,000 away. Um, leaving, we try and leave more seats to sell for home games than some clubs to allow next generation people to come, particularly in the family stand. So if there are games that fall on, like this Saturday, bank holiday weekend and August holidays, Family stand will look quite could look quite sparse this this weekend because of holidays and what have you, but we deliberately leave gaps in there so that new families can come. It's the only stand where we can really leave fours and fives and sixes together. There are lots of season ticket holders in there, but because of family commitments, it doesn't always look as full as some of the other stands. Um, we were wondering if maybe there might be an appetite to get those that wish to sing, singing against the away end, um, perhaps in an unreserved environment at the Vicarage Road stand. And then rather than have a stand we call a family stand that's actually next to the away end, I mean, you realise why we've done it, because it's self-contained. Perhaps every stand at Watford in the home area is, is a family area. And we could reflect crisis there and perhaps let those who want to have a good sing song and get the atmosphere really rocking as a lot of grounds, it seems as though home fans that want to sing have migrated themselves around to near where the away are to stop them leading, if you will, and also give a lead to the rest of the ground. So like like the badge, and it's a great comparison, we had a few ideas of our own. We got people to design some. We went through a lengthy process and we ended up essentially doing nothing. <laughs> and that could be that could be yeah and we all got paid for it great i told you it's, it's what we do best <laughs> nothing <laughs> that could be the case here james but we're going to ask we're going to ask some questions of seasons to get older initially what do they think and we'll put out the main trends in there and then we might ask a few supplementary questions all right Okay, yeah, thank you. I appreciate the, the clarity on that. Uh, second question directed uh, more towards Scott. And, and, and Scott, as I'm sure you're aware, your salary is publicly available to view uh, mm -hmm. via Companies House, and you do earn a significant figure. Uh, in the last set of Watford accounts, you were paid 
£948,000. So for context for everyone watching, Brentford's chairman, who have been stable in the Premier League for quite a while, uh, was paid £800,000 in their last set of accounts. So my question for you, uh, and I want you to answer this honestly, is how can you justify your salary being so high, given Watford's current status within the EFL over the past few seasons? I don't think it's a case of, of me justifying uh, my, my salary. I mean, there are many... Uh... There are many CEOs that earn more than me and there are many CEOs that, that earn less than me. But I think what the question is, is, you know, my, my commitment to this football club. And we've been asking players to renew contracts and uh, take reductions uh, in order to show that they're committed to the, uh, to, to the project. They could earn more elsewhere. And equally, I could earn more elsewhere. There are offers uh, where I can earn more than I, I, I currently earn. But I, I love the club. Uh, I, I think the project isn't completed. Enough people don't like the word project, but that, that's what it is. You know, we need to continue growing the infrastructure of the club. Um, we need to uh, be the best we can be, which will necessitate we get we get promoted. So, you know, I, I'm not interested in in moving to another club, uh, and I want to stay here and be part of that. So, I've I've reduced my salary by by fifty percent, so I can be part of the, the sustainable. Uh, the sustainable future and continue to deliver uh, uh, success to the football club. So uh, I did that uh, voluntarily and I did that uh, a few months ago, I think now. So will that appear in the next set of accounts that are published in the next financial year? Is that correct? I don't know how it works. It will be the year after because I've done it in this financial year. So the, the, the next set of accounts are for the last financial year, but uh, I don't know whether there's another way to be transparent, but I, no, I, I you've have been fully transparent. So just to clarify on your statement there, you said you've voluntarily taken a 50 percent pay cut uh, on, on, on your salary. A permanent pay cut whilst we're in the EFL. Yes. OK, thank you very much, Scott. OK. OK, those were the two questions I posed to both Richard Walker and Scott Duxbury. There was many other questions asked in the call by the other outlets involved, including Watford's current debt situation, the financial state of the club, incomings and outgoings during the transfer window. Does Tom Cleverley feel backed by the club? The relationship between Watford and Udinese and many other questions surrounding Watford and its structure were also asked during this Zoom call with Scott Duxbury. And you'll be able to find all of your answers to them via the other outlets who are present on the call. From the rookery end, do not scratch your eyes, Voices of the Vic and many others were also present. So make sure you check out their content around the interview with Scott Duxbury via their social media channels. But as I said, I hope you are satisfied with the answers. Number one, regarding the redesignation of home fans in Vicarage Road. It seems like that's something they're actively working on and will be communicated to the fans in due course. And also the question regarding Scott Duxbury's salary, I think was important to ask because as a working class guy just north of Watford, the salary he earned previously uh, was astronomical for a club of Watford's current status within the EFL. So to hear he's taken a voluntary 50% pay cut, why Watford remain in the English Football League, uh, I think is good news and a step in the right direction. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below once again. And I hope we can bring you more videos like this in the future.